Pit Bunny isn't real and can't hurt me. Pit Bunny isn't real and can't hurt me. Pit Bunny isn't real. And can't hurt me. While I might be too much of a big baby to play the FNAF games, when I saw the reveal concept art for Into the Pit, I knew I had to make it. I'm gonna let you guys argue amongst yourselves in the comments whether or not this is Spring Bonnie, Plush Trap or Spring Trap. Of course, building a physical version of one of the Freddy animatronics does sound like it might be a terrible idea. For this we'll need a few different parts. A ball pit, an adorable and totally safe Bonnie animatronic head. This needs to be hollow on the inside to fit a pair of LED bulbs and the eyes need to be partly transparent to let this light shine through. The pit will need to be filled with different colored balls. And lastly, we'll need a couple of arms belonging to the people who previously have broken the agreed upon safety procedures. First step is to hunt down and catch an aluminum foil nugget in the wild. As soon as it stops resisting and resigns to its new life as the inside of a robot bunny's skull, I'll mark the clay for reference, then poke and dig out two passably oval eye holes using the end of a broken loop tool as well as the end of a smaller not broken loop tool. Squishing a bean shape and a rectangle shape together makes for a perfect bunny muzzle mouth nose part. I'm using a dental tool to blend the two parts together and to give the muzzle a bit more shape. The main booping button is basically just a little clay triangle that then gets blended into the rest of the sniffer. Bonnie in the concept art has this mechanical lip going from the bridge of the nose and over the muzzle to show that it's made up of two different parts. What I guess is like the upper lip or something has this more organic shape to it, looking almost like a fur donut or maybe tangles of wires or something like that. Bonnie's head needs some extra structural strength to make sure that the bad thoughts won't get out. Because everyone likes a good bevel, I'm using a couple of flat rubber tip tools to deepen the panel separation and bevel the hard edges along the new plate. Not sure why I decided the slots for the ear attachments needed to go all the way through the skull, considering what I just said about the bad thoughts and the fact that it made it a real pain to attach the ears. Hello. Oh, did I forget to reset the ventilation <laughs> system again? I once again dig out the isopropyl alcohol to keep my bad thoughts from getting out as well as remove any crumbs or fingerprints that I've left on the model. It also smooths everything out a bit to make it all look more… smoother? After a quick spin in the oven, it's time to bring Bonnie to the scooping room. Want to see the scooping room? This aluminium crater really took a liking to being bunny brains and really got stuck in there pretty good. It's a hard life in the pit, so I'm using the pointy end of a dental tool to carve holes into the metal casing, as well as a bunch of cracks and scratches. I stole this way of doing it from North of the Border, who really needs no introduction, as I'm sure most of you are here because you clicked the wrong thing when trying to get to one of Adam's videos. I am still beautiful. The fluffy lip section is covered in an outer metal casing like everything else, and since I've already baked the clay underneath, it makes it super easy to just slap this strip on top and carve out the battle damage without smooshing all the existing fur detail. I can then use this small loop tool to mark and tear off some pieces to show off the juicy robot meat underneath. To give the illusion that the outer shell is actually there to hold in all the animatronic guts, I made a couple of little wire and tubing bits that we can have poking out from a few of the bigger holes. According to Google, bunnies have ears that they use to navigate and find endoskeletons trapped inside of security guards that need to be put back in their animatronic shells. The animatronic ears from the concept image has this kind of two-part jointed construction and as a former wannabe emo kid and proud owner of several overly zippered garments, 
I could probably sculpt this particular shape in my sleep. I'm warning you though to not go looking for photos of this version of me. There are some things that even the around in the scooping room won't be able to get out of your head. I sculpted and baked the internal metal parts first, which makes it a lot easier to keep that mechanical shape when adding the outer shell. This is made much the same way by just adding on a somewhat sloppy layer of clay, then using tools to remove the excess, sharpening edges and smoothing out surfaces, then get that little loop tool again to add a bit of wear and tear. Then do it all again, because turns out rabbits have two ears. These ear attachment points I sculpted off camera should fit perfectly in my pre-cut ear holes. As soon as they're triple glued into the ear slots, I can glue the ear joints together and make them ready for Bonnie's lobotomy. Sorry, I couldn't think of a better ear pun. Do bunnies even have ear lobes? Are you enjoying the video so far? If so, maybe consider liking the video and maybe even leaving a comment to help convince the scariest robot of all to show the video to more people. And if you've enjoyed some of my previous stuff as well, then maybe subscribe to the channel just so that you don't miss out on any future jokes and just so that you don't miss out on any of our future projects. R, it's just me. It really helps a lot, and it's one of the easiest and cheapest ways of buying my eternal love and friendship. Thanks. The eyeballs are just a cost clay sphere that I've poked a hole through so that the brain can see. For the ball pit, the delivery man from the internet brought me this set of minimalist nesting dolls. This lid is the perfect standard ball pit circumference, but to make sure we have room underneath for Bonnie's electronic intestines, we will need two. I'll stick the two lids together using a bit of crafting glue and put a weight on top for those sweet gains. The ball pit has this cool grimy back wall, which we will make by dismembering the nesting doll's now headless body. Before sticking that on though, I want to finish dressing the rest of the pit. So I carefully mark out the area where the wall is supposed to go so I don't add stuff there. To make the outside planks, I'll oh. deny these wooden stir stick their god-given right to ever feel the sweet taste of coffee by gluing them onto the sides of the pit. The back wall then goes up. I also pre-cut a couple of these square wooden beams for structural support, because here at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, safety is our number one priority while having only the ears pop out of the ball pit would make the whole project a lot less work, it would also make for a pretty ineffective thumbnail, so let's build a little riser for Bonnie's head to rest on out of this random plastic tube from my plastic tube collection. This is also where the wires for the eye lights will have to come up, so I'll use the tube to mark out where to cut a hole that is way too small when I later forget to run the wires through before assembling everything. To make the deliciously crunchy human bones our robot friends are such big fans of, I'll twist up a few lengths of this thin wire. I bundled four wire lengths together for the main fingies, then wrapped the thumb one around them all to bundle them into a section of arm appropriate thickness. The fingers then get bent into a classic cartoony rigor mortis pose before being padded out with a bit of aluminum foil connective tissue. The hands then get manhandled into shape using some handy sculpting tools. If it feels hard to put your finger on how to detail this, a good rule of thumb is to just dig it in using rubber tools. Handle this and you will be handsomely rewarded. Nailed it. Guess we have a second until these hands are done. So, how are you doing? 
seen any fun movies lately? Dune was fun. Yep. yep, 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 yep. Looks like it might rain later. Oh, look, the hand is done. Thank God, I was about five seconds away from myself. For maximum vascularity, I tried drawing on the veins using a ball stylus dipped in liquid Sculpey. Except for ending up a bit uneven in a few places, I think this method worked pretty okay. To make sure Bonnie looks festive for the big birthday party, all the parts are primed in white gesso before getting a few coats of their respective base colors. I painted all the metal skeleton parts in bolt gun metal, partly because that's what I had lying around, and part because bolt gun metal sounds hella rad. As soon as that was dry, I carefully went over all the cracks and corners with a thinned out brownish wash for a bit more grime and contrast, making sure I'm careful not to get a ton of it on the yellow surface, as this stuff dries super fast. I kind of wanted to go for a semi-mixed look for this project, where the surface is quite grimy and textured, but the edge highlights are more graphical and sharp. I gave the hoses and lip fluff parts a lighter reddish brown highlight and oh, I almost forgot to give these little head noodles a splash of regulation wire color. I mix up about 10 times the amount of lighter yellow acrylic paint than I actually need and start going ham sandwich on any edge that I can find. So I don't really have any hilarious jokes for this section, but I just want to say that so far in my very short painting career, I really find myself enjoying the highlighting part. While I'm not great at it, it does make me feel like I'm actually really painting, if that makes sense. But when you're done telling me all the crimes against painting that I'm committing, let me know what your favorite part of the process is. The metal parts will look silly with a yellow highlight, so I go for a more traditional bright silver for these edges. I painted the eyes black and white off camera, as well as filled the eye holes with UV resin. Making the iris shape should be super simple with this leftover hollow tube from a pressured air can. For the ball pit, I've just thinned a black acrylic paint with water that I cover everything with except for the back wall. That gets a similar wash, just in a dark burgundy purplish color. While this might not be goop, I can still stipple on an increasingly bright version of the same color in the middle of the wall to replicate the vignetting effect from the concept art. I start off by trying to freehand paint the checkerboard pattern, but quickly realize that there is zero chance the same hands from this shot will be able to hand paint a straight line at all. The solution was to first almost ruin the whole thing with masking tape, then lightly attach a bent piece of paper instead and pray that it somewhat stays in one place while you paint. I then cut out what I thought was a really smart stencil to block in the black squares, but I also cut it to an exceptionally inaccurate size, so I probably might as well have done it manually. While the title of the game is Into the Pit, the pit in question is actually a ball pit, and as such needs balls to look right. Please appreciate how hard it was to keep the jokes in this section PG, as I am a child. To fill a pit this size, we're gonna need to venture forth across many worlds in search of pit-appropriate spheres. Have a nice day. Go! 
When our sphere collection is sufficiently extensive, we just need to prime them all in white and get ready to... Hey, wait, oh my god, that is so many. Please, please make it stop. While trying to paint the first globe, I realized that not only did it look terrible, but through the power of math, it would also take me about 17 years to complete. If only I had an airbrush. Oh wait, I do have an airbrush. I bought this thing months ago, but was too intimidated to even open the box. As this is my first ever time using an airbrush at all, I have no frame of reference if it's good or not, and this is not sponsored by Big Airbrush. In addition to our severely rounded corner cubes, we need some thinner airbrush cleaner, as well as all the different colors that make up the three-dimensional circles from the concept art. Airbrushing should be done in a well-ventilated room using professional equipment. I've glued a bunch of my white globules onto this offcut of a paint stirring stick to make them stay in place while I paint them. But surprisingly, it turns out that my cardboard box from the garbage does not supply enough ventilation to keep the overspray from going everywhere, including into my computer and, to somewhat lesser importance, my lungs. I pre-glue a bunch of these orb stir stick combos and make the long trek over to Kitchenland, where they have advanced technology like fan and not having my computer stuff right next to it. As soon as they have all gotten their festive glow up, I need to get them back to their shiny former selves, so I brush them all with a coat of gloss varnish. While that is drying, I need to make the bottom of the pit more uneven and organic to give the illusion that the pit is more than two layers of spheres deep. I built a bunch of little speed bumps by crumpling up alufoil, taping it to the floor using masking tape, then covering it all in the same thin black paint as the rest of the floor. Now starts the arduous task of hand gluing the first layer of these different colored pokeballs to the floor. But aren't you impressed that I managed to go this whole segment without making a single b-word joke? Pretty nuts, right? The arms have been base coated in this warm darkish red color, which will end up mostly being visible in the recesses. For the main surface color, I mix some Raikland flesh shade with a bit of blue airbrush paint to get more of that pale, dead guy looking color and covered most of the arm with it. I then progressed through an increasingly bright version of this mixed with Kislev flesh until I had something that looked passably like multi-layered pale blood-drained skin. The veins are then painted in a very thin blue with a bit of the lightest version of that skin paint mixed in. Now, being murdered doesn't mean you get to be sloppy with your visuals, so I made sure they get to enter the afterlife sporting a fresh manicure. This is about a moment where I remember that I super forgot the part where I need to stick the arms into the floor before filling the pit with balls. With a tear in my eye, I pry some of the pit balls back out, then use about every pointy thing I had around me to try and make a hole for the copper bone stumps to fit into. When I slotted them in, I realized that they were both quite a bit too long and would be sticking out of the pit too far, but nothing a bit of morally questionable dissection can't fix. To build Bonnie's complex child digestive system, we're gonna need a battery holder, a holdable battery, a tiny light switch, some heat shrink tubing that I'll forget to use 90% of the time, soldering wire, blue LED bulbs, protective glasses for my soft millennial eyeballs, some small gauge electric wire, and the only robot that doesn't want to kill me, I think. With a little help from our benevolent robot friend, I solder a wire from the battery to one pole of the bulbs and another to the switch, then from the switch to the other pole of the bulbs. These LEDs are extremely directional, so I'll want to make them point directly into the eye holes by gently bending the pole pieces 90 degrees. I can then solder the bulbs to each other and the connection points. And we are ready to see if this thing actually works, or if I'm just going to find something else to do with my life. 
Okay, let's not spend all our battery power here at once. Jeez. First up on our head assembly task list is getting the eyes placed correctly. I see you. Yeah, no, I still don't have any good lamaus about ears. But do feel free to leave your funny ear puns in the comments. While Bonnie in the concept art looks menacing, ours so far is mostly a blend between surprised and confused, which I probably would be too if I didn't have eyelids. Hello. Now, since we no longer have the option to bake the whole thing again, I'll have to build the eyelids out of green stuff. I'll twist and smoosh the blue and green parts until they become different green before shoving some approximately rabbit eyelid sized bits into the eye sockets and mush them into place with a moist sculpting tool. Being the fancy lady that she is, Bonnie needs a fancy eyeshadow to go with her new eyelids. Now all she needs is a coat of UV resin for that sexy wet eyeball look and we are ready to make those eyes come alive. My first and extremely optimistic idea was to just stick a bit of double-sided tape inside the head and stick the LEDs to that. Not only did the LEDs not stick at all, but getting them to point in the right direction was basically impossible. Luckily, my inner studson has made me save about 50 of these plastic dog poopy bag rolls, which just happened to be almost the perfect size for Bonnie's eyeballs. I can then just glue the LEDs directly to those, and the bulb is now basically pointed directly into the eye holes. With a quick smattering of super glue, I can now gingerly pop Bonnie's adorable head onto the riser, and all that is left is a quick 5 hours of hand gluing one f color bulb onto the pile at a time until we have used every single Pokeball we collected at the start of this video. The show will begin momentarily. Everyone, please stay in your seats. <laughs> 